great scene, you may be something that. Well, tonight we're going to be looking at a familiar passage of Scripture. Turn to the Old Testament book of Isaiah, if you would. Isaiah chapter 40. And we often quote this passage here trying to encourage those of us who maybe sometimes get tired, we get worn out, and we're trying to you know, encourage ourselves to go on. This is a great passage here. But we're going to look at something, a, a practical part of this, uh, this passage here. But Isaiah chapter 40, we're going to start reading here at the end of the chapter, verse 28, and read down to the last, uh, through verse 31. And Isaiah here is asking a question. He says, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. And verse 31 is where we want to zero in our attention here. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. And in verse 31, to start there, where it says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You know, as we get, uh, sometimes get tired in life, and you know, you get, maybe it's, uh, you have work, you go to work, you come home, you might have to run the kids somewhere, or uh, you've got to go to this activity, or you've got to go shopping for groceries, and uh, maybe doctor's appointments, and, and uh, boy, I tell you what, it just seems like sometimes you just want here, there, and your strength runs out. But it says here, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. But the question that I would ask is, how do you wait upon the Lord? <laughs> what exactly does that mean? How does that help us here? So we're going to look at that here tonight, how we can wait <coughs> upon the Lord so our strength can be renewed. Well, let's pray and get into the message here. Our Father, we come before you and thank you that, Lord, you are a gracious, powerful God. And Lord, we're thankful that you have given us so much instruction throughout the Word of God and, and things that would help us uh, to just live our lives and live it in a way that will please you. And, and Lord, we know that, Lord, there are times when we get weak. There are times that uh, we seem just strung out and tired. And, and uh, Lord, I pray that you help us to realize these great truths here tonight and how we can wait upon you so our strength can be renewed. And Father, we just ask and pray also if there be any in our service that is not sure if heaven is their home. Lord, that is the most important thing that we could ever get settled is our salvation. And then, Lord, after that, as far as just living our life, to please you. So, Father, I pray that you'll be honored and glorified through all the decisions made here tonight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, there are a lot of great promises in the Bible for times when we are weak. Uh, I'm going to have you turn to a few places. We'll be mostly in the Psalms and Proverbs, but uh, a passage you don't have to turn to this one. This is a familiar passage here uh, from 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. And listen to what verse 9 and 10 says. We often use these verses as well. It says, And he said unto me, and then this is quoting the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength, that's Christ, his strength, is made perfect or complete in weakness. So Christ's strength is made perfect in weakness. And his grace is sufficient for us. Grace is something that we get from God that we do not deserve. It's just something he gives to us. We're saved by grace through faith. And so we are saved that way. But also, we live that way through the Christian life. It goes on here in that same verse. Paul continues, and because... God's grace is sufficient for us, and because his strength is made perfect in our weakness, Paul said this, he said, Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, and these next three words are key. For Christ's sake. 
All of those things that we go through are for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. We're told in Philippians 4.13 that I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. So God wants us to have this strength, but it's only going to be through the Lord Jesus Christ. Here in this passage we read from Isaiah, we see that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. But this is a conditional thing. In order for our strength to be renewed, we're, we're told in verse 29 and verse 30 that he gives power to the faint and, and he's going to give strength to them that have no mind and all these things he's going to do for us. But it's conditional on this thing right here. We must wait upon the Lord. So what does it mean to wait upon the Lord? Do we just sit around and wait? Is it like when Becky and I go shopping and she goes into the store, in the grocery store, and I wait in the car and just wait and wait some more and read some things and wait. Is that what we do? No. This waiting is not a passive waiting, but it is an active waiting. And what it's talking here when it says wait, it's kind of like the word that we use for waiter. You think about somebody who is uh, a waiter in a restaurant or a waitress. Uh, you know, if they're in a restaurant, they, they're going to have a watchful eye. They're going to be sensitive to needs, and they're going to be quick to respond. They're going to be on a lookout for how they can please the people they're waiting on, if they're a good waiter or waitress. Unlike what we heard last night in the uh, thing, he asked for a Coke, and she's like, okay, and she just left, they give him a Coke, you know? <laughs> That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about someone who is looking and how the needs can be met. And that's kind of what the same idea is when we wait upon the Lord. It's not looking how it needs to be met, but we do need to be looking. So I'm going to give you some things here and how we can wait on the Lord. There's, and these are really simple, really basic things, but these are must if our strength is going to be renewed. And of course, obviously, I think it's, it should go without saying, all of this starts only with salvation. If a person does not know for sure heaven is their home, that's where they've got to start. Because you're not going to get to heaven in your own strength. You're not going to get there because you're a good person or uh, you're morally right. I was telling, I think, school to Bible classes there Monday night that uh, I came across an article that uh, in the younger generation, they are turning more and more to secular humanism. And secular humanism basically teaches that we're, we're all pretty good. We don't need God. We don't need religion. We don't need these things because we're just good people. That's not what God says. God says there is none that doeth good. No, not one. We are all gone out of the way. We have all turned aside and we've all gone astray because we are all sinners. So we all need a Savior. And that's where it must start if we are going to wait on the Lord and renew our strength. We have to know for sure that Jesus Christ has forgiven our sins and we have a home in heaven. But once we've done that and we're a child of God, these promises are here for us. So how do we wait upon the Lord? First of all, you must long for Him. You must long for Him. In Psalm 62, this is one place I would like you to turn. Turn to Psalm 62. And like I said, most of these verses we're going to read here are Psalms and Proverbs. David was in a time of great distress. In Psalm 62, listen to what he says here throughout the first part of this psalm. Psalm 62 and verse number 1, the psalm starts this way. Truly, my soul waiteth upon God. Now, this doesn't answer the question, how do we wait? What do we do? From him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. How long will ye imagine mischief against a man? Ye shall be slain, all of you, as a bowing wall shall ye be, and as a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. See law. And here we go. My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. 
He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge in, is in God. Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. David was writing this, as I mentioned, in great distress. And, and he's trying to tell us how we need to wait upon God. We must long and thirst for his presence. We must sit expectantly. Effectively of what God is going to do. Psalm 84 verse 2 is another good verse here. This again is a psalm to the sons of Korah. And it says this, My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. This is the longing David was talking about. Our flesh, our heart is crying out for God. Oh God, I've got to hear from you. I've got to see you work in my life. I've got to have my strength renewed. I'm waiting upon you. Psalm 42 verse 1 says this. David again speaking here. He says, as the heart, which is the deer, as the heart paineth after the water brooks, so paineth my soul after thee, O God. Do we thirst for God that way? We sing a song sometimes, Oh, how I thirst for God, for the living God. You know, our soul needs to thirst for God. We need to long for God. That's where the waiting must start. We must realize we have a great need, and it is God Almighty. I always like to pride myself in some ways, and it's not a bad pride, it's a, it's a good kind of pride of being a good worker. I like to uh, work hard, I like to outwork every job I've ever had, I always try to outwork everybody else, and, and uh, try to be the most efficient, and, and just if the boss said do this, I was going to do it the best. I remember one time I was working on a roof with somebody, and uh, my brother-in-law were you know, together, and we had some guys there with us, and uh, we... We had just started in this business, so we didn't have all the fancy tools, and, and they didn't have a boom truck available to get the shingles up to the roof, and we were actually going two stories up. And so we were like, he was sitting there like, how are we going to you know, get all these shingles up on this roof? Which, and he's trying to think of this smart, efficient way, because shingles can get kind of heavy. I mean, the first bundle or two is not too bad, but you start carrying one after another, it gets a little tired. I was like, this is how we're going to do it. I took one third of my shoulder and up the ladder I went. And went up there, dumped it on the roof, came back down and got another one. And he's just like, you mean this is all we're going to do? I said, this is all I'm going to do. Let's get up there so we can get started. And, you know, bundle after bundle after bundle. By the time we got done, we were wiped out. I mean, all four of us just going up and down the ladder, up and down the ladder. We got all the shingles up there in, you know, in a, a very brief amount of time. But we were tired. We were exhausted. And sometimes that's the way we are in our own life is we kind of, you know, just say we're going to take the bull by the horns and we're going to make this thing happen. And we wear ourselves out. But, you know, there are times when your strength just isn't going to get you there. Your strength is not going to cut it. And you must long for the strength that only God can give you. That's the first thing we must do. If all you're wanting is relief from your tiredness, that's not longing for God. You just want to quick out. We must long for God and want God because he has all the answers. Secondly, we need to not just long for him. We must listen to him. Turn, if you would, over to Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8. <coughs> The Bible has a lot of things to say about our words. Our words we need to choose very carefully uh, because words affect how people think. It affects sometimes how they feel because we can hurt people's feelings without you know, just very unintentionally sometimes. Uh, so we have to choose our words carefully. In James chapter 3, almost the whole entire chapter is talking about the poison of the tongue. It's an unruly evil full of deadly poison. But so oftentimes I'm afraid that we, we focus on the words, and words are important. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pictures of silver. It can do great good, but it can also do great harm. But we ought not just focus on our words. The Bible has a lot of things to say 
about our hearing and how we hear and the importance of hearing the right things. And here in Proverbs chapter number 8, look if you would in verse 33, he says, Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me. This is speaking of God. Watching, there it is, the watching and waiting. Watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. God is going to bless those that wait, those that listen, and those that obey him. That little phrase there in verse 34 that says, watching daily at my gates. This is talking about our appointment time with God. It's our quiet time that we meet with God when we are waiting for him to, uh, it's kind of like allowing him, he is, I'm sorry, him allowing us uh, admittance. This is similar to what they used to do in the old days uh, at a king's palace. Uh, the, the courtiers there, they would have to allow you admittance into the presence of the king. And you would sit there and you would uh, do what this little phrase says. You would watch at the gates. You're waiting to be allowed to enter. It's kind of like we were studying there through Esther where the gold scepter was let out. That's kind of what this is. You had to wait until that gold scepter. If you, the gold scepter wasn't extended to you, then you could be killed. And uh, so that was the seriousness of this. So when we're talking about uh, waiting on the Lord, we need to long for him. But then we also need to listen to him. And for, listen for him to say, okay, come. That's kind of the idea that's being given here. But look here also, it says, at the end of verse 34, it says, waiting at the post of my doors. Waiting at the post of the doors. This is like the, the scholars back in this day. People who went uh, to school, went to colleges, not like you think of colleges today. This is actually back then people who wanted to be in college. They wanted to learn. Uh, and then you actually were taught some things there. And you would wait for the instructor to open the doors. And you went in eagerly to hear what the professors would say. That's what it's talking about here when it says waiting at the post of my doors. You're going before God. You're, you're waiting to be instructed. You're waiting for him to, to give you some help, some instruction, so you can be wise in what you're doing, wise in your ways. And you're just waiting anxiously to be taught from the master. So we need to not only long for him, we need to listen to him. So many times Jesus himself got alone with the Father. He, here he was, God in human flesh. Yet he had to come apart before he fell apart. We have to have time that we spend alone with God Almighty. We talk about a quiet time. We preach about a quiet time. We even sing about a quiet time. Our problem so often, and this is why so many of us get weary and worn out, is we don't practice quiet time. We need to long for him. We need to listen for him. Thirdly, we need to look to him as well. We need to look to the Lord. God takes care of the flowers of the field. He takes care of animals on this earth. As the animals on the earth look to him for their necessities, look, look to him for their food. <clears throat> And the Bible tells us that we are made better than the flowers of the field. We are made better than these animals. Uh, take your Bible, turn with me to Psalm 104. We're not going to look at this whole uh, psalm here because this whole, almost the whole entire psalm is about how God takes care of his creation. How much more is he going to take care of you and I who are created in his image? So we need to look for him. We need to, first of all, long for him, long for his presence. Then we need to, to listen to that still small voice. Get into his presence and just listen, wait to be instructed. And then we need to look to him. Psalm 104 verse 10 says, He sendeth the springs into the valleys which run among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild asses quench their thirst. By them shall the fowls of the heaven have their habitation which sing among the branches. He watereth the hills from his chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man that he may bring forth food out of the earth. 
and wine that maketh glad the heart of man, and oil to make his face to shine, and bread which strengtheneth man's heart. The trees of the Lord are full of sap, the cedars of Lebanon which he hath, he hath planted, where the birds make their nests. As for the stork, the fir trees are her house. The high hills are a refuge for the wild goats, and the rocks for the conies. He appointed the moon for seasons, the sun knoweth his going down. Thou makest darkness, and it is night, wherein all the beasts of the forest do creep forth. The young lions roar after their prey, their prey and seek their meat from God. The sun ariseth, they gather themselves together and lay down in their dens. Man goeth forth unto his work and to his labor until the evening. O Lord, how manifold are thy works! In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. So is this great and wide sea, wherein are things creeping innumerable, both small and great beasts. There go the ships. There is that Leviathan whom thou hast made to play therein. These wait all upon thee, that thou mayest give them their meat in due season, that thou givest them, they gather, thou openest thine hand, they are filled with good. You see, this is talking about looking for God. If God is going to take care of all of these things, how much more is he going to take care of his own children? God is a good God. He is a gracious God. Can't we trust God as much as the animals in the forest? Can't we trust God as much as the animals that are in the sea? Sure we can. Psalm 121 verse 1 and 2 says that I will lift up my eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6, we often quote those about trusting in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not on thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. You see, we need to, we need to long for God. Then we need to listen to God, listen for his instruction, and then we need to look to God for answers. Our only help is going to come from him. Now God will use many avenues sometimes to give us guidance and instruction. Sometimes he will uh, answer our prayers through a, a resource maybe that we didn't expect. It reminds me of a story of uh, a guy who was in a ship. Sometimes we get this way. Uh, he was in a ship and uh, the ship had gone down and, and he was drowning and he was out there you know, on the sea being washed about. And he's crying out to God. He says, God, you know, please save me, please save me. And off in the distance, here comes a, a rowboat, and the guy's making his way, and he sees this man out there in the waves just struggling, and, and this guy is still crying out, Lord, save me, Lord, save me. And the guy comes by in the rowboat, and he's like, here, take hold of this. And he threw him out one of those life things, and he said, here, take hold of this. And the guy said, no, thank you, I'm waiting for God to save me. You see how foolish we are sometimes? God is using sometimes other resources. He's trying to help us. He's trying to do what he can to renew our strength. But we're thinking it's going to work this way. We're thinking it's going to be something unusual. God has no problem using the ordinary. He has no problem using just regular everyday things. Sometimes God does do the miraculous. But we need to look for him for the answers. And then lastly, if we're going to wait upon the Lord, these things are necessary. If we're going to wait upon the Lord and renew our strength. We have to make sure that we are longing for him. We, we have to realize he is everything that we need. He's our only resource. We need to listen for that instruction. We need to look to him, keep our eyes fixed upon Jesus. And then this is the third thing. And this is sometimes where we drop the ball. And this is why our strength doesn't get renewed. We might have all those other things. But this is necessary. We must live for him. We have to live for him. God is not going to renew your strength when you're disobedient. God is not going to renew my strength if I'm out of his will. You see, that thing that we read there in Isaiah, those promises are sure promises, but they're also conditional. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Without living for him, we are not being obedient. And God is not going to bless disobedience. Proverbs chapter 27, in verse 18, this will be the last verse we turn to here. 
Proverbs 27 and verse 18. This is a very practical, Proverbs is a book of wisdom. This is a very practical verse here, just with a little bit of wisdom in it here. In Proverbs 27 and 18, it says, Whoso keepeth the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof. So he that waiteth on his master shall be honored. Now, he gives us here in this, in this proverb a picture of a fig tree. Now, if you have a fig tree, or any fruit tree for that matter, or anything in a garden, you have to do some pruning. Sometimes you have to do some fertilizing. You have to nurture this thing if you're going to get the right kind of fruit. If you don't do any of that, you may still get fruit, but it may be warped a little bit because it's got too many branches growing off of it and you never prune the thing back. But the more work and care you put into it, this is our obedience, the better the fruit's going to be able to be. And that's what it says there. That's the picture he's given there at the end of the verse. He says, so he that waiteth on his master shall be honored. You see, we have to give some care to our life. We can't just, so oftentimes I think in the Christian life, we think, you know, just living the Christian life is going to be nice and easy and we don't have to do anything. That's just not true. There are things we have to do. If you want to be a strong, mature Christian, there are things that you must do. And this is why we need to be taught. This is why we need to be instructed. Now, God loves you unconditionally. And when he saved you, you are his child. And that's never going to change. But God didn't save you just to get you to heaven. He saved you so you could be a light in this dark world. And when he saved you, he wants your life to be something that it will draw other people to himself. That's what God wants for us. So when God uh, gives us some instruction, he wants us to be obedient to him. So we, if we're going to wait on the Lord, we have to long for him. If we're going to wait on the Lord, we have to listen to him. If we're going to wait on the Lord, we have to look to him. He is our only answer. But if we're going to wait on the Lord, we need to make sure we're living for him. And you're not always going to be right. I'll tell you that right now. There's going to be times that you're going to mess up. But God knows your heart. He knows if you're trying or not. He knows if you're really putting forth that best effort. He knows if you're taking care of the fig tree. He knows if you're pruning it, if you're fertilizing it, if you're watering it, if you're nurturing that thing. He also knows if you're just making excuses. We need to make sure that when we get strung out, you know, it'd be nice if we just had God's strength on a tap. That anytime we needed it, we could just, you know, it's like a little water tap. You could just get some water, get some of that strength, and just, oh, and that would be great. But it's not that way. Because if you're not doing these four things, the time is going to come when you're going to need his strength. And because you haven't waited on him, the strength's not going to be available. And the devil is going to eat you alive and sit prey. Because that verse is true. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And I love the last part. They shall man up with wings as eagles. You ever see an eagle fly? That eagle can fly higher and higher and higher and doesn't even flap its wings one time. They shall man up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. I tried doing some running the other day. I got about three laps in the gym and I was weary. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like it used to be. But the Bible says they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is talking about us spiritually. That walking is walking in the spirit. It's walking in and just living the Christian life. And it says, and they shall not faint. In other words, they're not going to quit. They're not going to throw in a towel. They're not going to be drawn aside. Why? Because they waited on the Lord. We all need to wait on the Lord. It starts with salvation. But God's given us some good instruction here how we can do it. Let's all stand. We'll have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your many blessings. And thank you, Lord, for the instructions that you give to us about how we can wait upon you.
And Lord, it has to start with us being saved. Lord, if there's someone here tonight that is not really sure heaven's their home, we would love to help them with that. We would love to show them what uh, the Bible says. It doesn't matter what our opinions are. It matters what the Word of God says. And you tell us, Lord, we are all sinners. We all deserve your wrath. We all deserve a lake of fire. But Lord, we're thankful that you love us. As we sang earlier, that Jesus loves us, even us. And Father, we're thankful for that. But Lord, we must receive that free gift for ourselves. We must accept the gift that you have given to us, the gift of eternal life through the death of your Son. And so, Lord, I pray for someone here tonight who needs to get that settled, that before they leave, they will pray. They can pray right where they're standing. They can come forward. We can help them from the Bible. We can pray with them. But they need to pray and ask you, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, Father, I pray they do that. For those of us who are Christians, Lord, Lord, I know that there are times, because I've been in this life now for a little while, I know there are times when I am weak. I know there are times when they are weak. And, Lord, sometimes our strength is just exhausted. We've run out. Lord, help us to realize how important it is to wait upon the Lord so that when we need to draw from your strength, it's readily available because we have been waiting upon you. And Lord, if we haven't been waiting upon you, that's where we need to get back to. We need to get back to longing for your presence, to listen to you, to look to you, and then live our lives in obedience to you. So, Father, I pray whatever the need is here tonight that you will bless. And, Lord, may you bless the song of invitation. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.